Now, the other personality who also influenced Nkrumah's decision to travel abroad was our own Inamdi Azekewe of Nigeria. Now, Inamdi Azekewe himself has schooled in America. Azekewe was one of the first African to be enrolled in Lincoln University. And Azekewe, having traveled back to Gold Coast, to Africa, he visited Gold Coast to um, give a speech in a teacher's seminar. And listen to what Nkrumah says about Azekewe. He says, my nationalism was also revived about the same time through articles written by the African Morning Post by Inamdi Azekewe, a Nigerian from Onitsha. Azekewe was himself a graduate from an American university. And when I had first met him after he had addressed a meeting of the Gold Coast Teachers Association some years earlier in Accra, I had been greatly impressed by him and had been more determined than ever to go to America. So these are the people who influenced Nkrumah to travel to America for higher education because he felt that if he needed to, 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 to be better and contribute to Africa's growth and achieve his young dream, then he had to go outside Gold Coast. Um, aside the fact that there was a, a Prince of Wales College that trained teachers, there wasn't any university in Gold Coast as at that time. And here I am talking about 1935. And so Nkrumah decided to travel to America for his higher education. But how did he go? You know, Agbehi, Nkrumah had to travel. First of all, he had to stow away to Nigeria. He stowed away to Nigeria to meet a relative who had to help him organize some funds and add up that money to the monies that he had from the family, the extended family. And it was that money that Nkrumah used to travel to America for higher education. So if you ask me, I think that these are the people who, upon Nkrumah having interacted with them, realized that if he needed to be any better and contribute greatly to Africa's development, then he had to travel outside Gold Coast to pursue higher education. And that was the motivation for his travel. <laughs> that is great. <laughs> you see, the, the, the thing is that uh, there, are, there are a lot of pieces that really make up the human being, the human story, you know? And, and it's beginning to get even more interesting as we talk more and more about it. And you see, this is why we need you, <laughs> the, the historian, people who have the time to be able to, to see them and begin to, to look at the page and turn it again and again and try to, to make sense out of it. We all need each other. We all need each other to be able to do all this. Uh, and also, there is a saying in among the Igbo people, of course, I'm not going to say it in Igbo language, <laughs> that <laughs> you cannot sit down in one place to look at the masquerade. You need to be dancing. Because if the masquerade is dancing, you need to be dancing around with it. That is how you are going to be able to see it. Where you sit in one place now, you only see it far away from you. So uh, mm -hmm. the life of this, uh, uh, this uh, Ghanaian son, who has become, of course, an African son, an African hero, you see, it be moving from one place to another, from uh, Ghana to Nigeria, now to uh, the United States where he studies. Because if he didn't go to the United States, he would never meet the, the message of uh, of Marcos Garvey. Because at that time, Marcos Garvey yes. have, have, have sowed his seed in the mind of the people. Mm -hmm. Talking of more yes. than 400 million uh, African, okay, he said, Negro mm -hmm. at the time, uh, they need to mm -hmm. unify themselves and come home. Because, of course, mm -hmm. they didn't get there because they wanted to go to the diaspora. These are people that were chained exactly. and took... <laughs> yes. Anyway, this is, a, this is a sad part of our story. I'm looking at it like a kind of a laughing matter, but that is not what actually I mean. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean it, it actually yeah. in the opposite yeah. sense. So, exactly. this is where uh, Kruma, who is a young boy who is coming from Ghana, also mm -hmm. he said, knowing what has happened to his ancestors, took this message very seriously. I want to repeat that again. He took the message of Gave very, very seriously. And he came home with it. So I want you to spend some time there explaining to Ross uh, the contact between uh, the young crewman 
and the mm-hmm. message of Marcus Garvey, and he bring it back mm-hmm. the message whole because then I'm going to ask you some question as as elaboration went on. All right, thank you very much, Ukbehi. So the first point is that how did Nkrumah get to hear about Marcus Garvey? Is 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 it that somebody introduced Marcus Garvey and his writings to Nkrumah, and who did that? That's the first question, and let us look at that in his autobiography. You will find out who introduced Marcus Garvey to Nkrumah. Did Nkrumah, by his own volition, discover Marcus Garvey and his writings? No. Somebody introduced Marcus Garvey to Nkrumah, and Nkrumah tells us who did that. So I will take our viewers and listeners back to Nkrumah's own autobiography, page 14. And it is there. And I read, he says, he's talking about Dr. Kweji Agri, because Kweji Agri, as I mentioned, was the vice principal of the Prince of Wales College, now Achimota College. Kweji Agri was also teaching history in Achimota. Nkrumah was a student of Kweji Agri. And this is what Nkrumah says about Kweji Agri. He says, it was through him that my nationalism first aroused. Agri was extremely proud of his color, but was strongly opposed to racial segregation in any form. And although he could understand Marcus Garvey's principle of Africa for the Africans, he never hesitated to attack this principle. He believed conditions should be such that the black and the white races should work together. Cooperation between the black and the white peoples was the key note of his message and the essence of his mission. And he used to expound this by saying, Quote, you can play a tune of sorts on, on the white keys and you can play a tune of sorts on the black keys, but for harmony, you must use both the black and the white, unquote. I could not even at that time accept this idea of agris as being practicable, for I maintain that such harmony can only exist when the black race is treated as equal to the white race, that only a free and independent people, a people with a government of their own, can claim equality racial or otherwise with another people, unquote. Now, this was Nkrumah talking about Kweji Agri. So it means that when Nkrumah was a student in Achimota College, he was having deliberations with the teacher, that is Kweji Agri. And Kweji Agri, being someone who was well-read and a historian himself, introduced or made mention of Marcus Gavi to Nkrumah for the first time. So Nkrumah got to hear about Marcus Garvey through Kweji Agri. And that was it, that Nkrumah thought that, well, Agri's approach to Africa's independence and the harmony could only happen if we first of all look at what Marcus Garvey is saying. 